Hey, what's up, fellas? How we doing? Matt Tonelli here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about um, a player that I started working with. This is um, first day of, of work on the left is just the initial swing. You know, we take all the players and first thing I do is I get them on video so we kind of have a baseline of where we're starting from. Then we also take, um, you know, a couple different readings, get their exit velocity, get their um, bat pass, stuff like that. Um, and then this video over here is from probably about, I don't know, about 30, 40 minutes um, after this one. Maybe not that long. Yeah, probably about 30 minutes after this one is taken. So this is day one still. I threw this video up on Instagram and um, just wanted to go over it, talk a little bit more about kind of what we're trying to do and some of the changes that we're trying to make. Um, you know, first thing when, when I look at a player, the two main things is, first thing is... Um, what's the bat path what's the typical bat path and obviously bat path changes a little bit depending on pitch location um but most hitters are going to be um they're going to be guys that either are steep to the ball so really downhill to the ball um you know some guys are uh, have a bat path that's kind of slightly up that's kind of what we're trying to get and then you've got some guys that, you know, the, they lose the ball really quickly and they're really, really, really uphill. And then obviously you have different degrees of, of each one. Um, but so the first thing is kind of classifying, you know, what's the typical bat path of the player? Um, and then bats, honestly, bat speed um, or exit velocity speed, how fast the ball comes off the bat. Um, typically by looking at the bat path, I can almost... I can tell pretty quickly whether it's going to be a you know pretty high exit velocity or not, um, and obviously the player's size and strength and all that stuff contributes to it as well. But so we kind of take those first few things, and then um, you know then we start looking at the swing. So we take some video, we look at the swing, we go through a bunch of reps to kind of see the ball flight and stuff like that, and and then um, you know we start to kind of talk to the player about what we're trying to do. So. Here's a couple of things. Main things that we that we did with this player is on the left, you can kind of see again that he's, you know, he has a swing that's steep to the ball. And again, doesn't really matter where the pitch is. He he likes to attack the ball kind of on a downhill path. So you can see that right there. Um and so few things that we want to few reasons why, you know, we try to get players to be more slightly up through the zone instead of being steep to the ball. For one, you guys have probably heard me say this before, but you know the pitcher's throwing from an elevated mound overhand to a catcher that's squatted. So the ball's coming slightly down. And so we want to try to match that plane of the pitch. When you match the plane of the pitch, you create this really big hitting window right here. Okay, So your back gets in the zone early back here. And it stays in for a really, really long time. So now your timing doesn't have to be as perfect. Because on that pitch path, you know, we don't know which point along this path we're going to make contact. And so if we can get a, a, a path, a bat path that can kind of cover all of these points, well, then if we're late, you know, we can hit the ball back here. You know, if we're on time, we can hit the ball here. If we're early, we can hit the ball here. Because we're in this window longer it gives ourselves a higher chance to square the ball up to make contact with the ball so our consistency goes up okay when you have a path that's kind of steep or down like this well then the window usually shrinks all right so now your window gets a lot smaller and so your bad head when you swing down too much or again swing up too much but we'll just for now just talk kind of about down um you're not in the zone early. You don't get in the zone back here. You don't stay in the zone for a long time. So that window gets much smaller. And so now your consistency goes down because you only have this small area right here to kind of impact that ball. So your timing has to be better. Your hand-eye has to be better. Okay, so that's kind of the first thing. The second thing is if the ball's coming slightly down, so the ball's coming slightly down. Let me get an arrow. Ball's coming slightly down. 
I want to try to, you know, my goal is to drive line drives with some carry where I can hit some doubles. You know, obviously line drives are, are base hits more often than ground balls or fly balls. And so I'm trying to get the ball. You know, they talked about launch angle. We've talked about that in the past. We're trying to get a launch angle of somewhere, again, depending on the player size and age and strength and all that stuff, we're trying to get a launch angle of somewhere in that, you know, 20, 25, 30 degree range. Again, it's going to depend a little bit, but essentially we're trying to get a line drive with some carry so that we can get more base hits and slug the ball a little bit more, okay? So in order to get that, if the ball's coming slightly down, ball's coming slightly down, my arrows are not good right now, if I want to send the ball back out in this direction, I want to swing slightly up, okay? Only makes sense. So when I make contact with the ball, I square it up. Boom, the ball's hit basically right back where it came from. Ball's able to get some carry. I'm able to get the ball in the air a little bit. If I swing, ball's coming slightly down, and I swing down, well, then I'm much more likely to hit the ball into the ground. So I hit a lot of these smothered ground balls. If I hit the top part of the ball, you know, above center, I smash it down into the ground. If I hit below center, what typically happens, I'm steep to the ball. The ball has a tendency to go up more like this. So I get more high fly balls, right? I kind of cut the ball. I don't square the ball up. I cut it, and I get these, you know, high fly balls to the infield. I get a lot of high shallow fly balls to the opposite field, to the outfield. And so I'm not driving the ball, Okay. And same thing when I'm here. So I'm this way. I get a lot more topspin balls when I hit kind of the top part of the ball. And I have a tendency to be under the ball more because my barrel kind of gets this way. And so I'll hit, all, again, I'll hit more balls in the air, but I don't really drive it as much. I hit the ball, you know, a little bit higher and a little bit, uh, you know, more towards not so much the infield, but, you know, higher fly balls, kind of routine fly balls to the outfield. All right. So I want to be able to. I want to be able to line this thing up, swing slightly up, ball's coming slightly down, I impact that thing squarely, and I send the ball out boom, right where I want it, where I'm able to drive some doubles in the gap, you know, singles, doubles, triples, homers, in the gap, okay? So you can see on the right here, again, he was able to change this pretty quickly. You can see the difference in path, right? So now the bat's starting to work more slightly up. So that's the path we're trying to create. And you can see how that's in the zone for a lot longer than the one on the left, right? The one on the left doesn't really get in the zone very much at all. And after their hits, I actually cut the video off so you can't see. But that, that area to impact the ball is very small. On the right, you know, if he's late, let's say he's late on the ball, boom, he can hit the ball back. He can even hit the ball back here. He's in the zone. 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 So, again, that that area becomes really, really big, okay? The other thing is when you swing, when you swing slightly up, the sequence of the swing, the way the, your body works together, works much better to where you're able to utilize, your swing works more from the ground up, and so you're able to create, You know, again, we've talked about this in the past, go back and watch our other videos, you're able to create some more tension in your body. You're able to get better stretch. Think of your body like an elastic band. You're able to store energy better when you swing slightly up, okay? When you swing down on the ball too much, that's a square. I don't want a square. When you swing down on the ball too much, this is everybody, everyone I've ever seen. Guys that swing down on the ball, it's a really upper body swing. The swing's out of sequence. It works top down, right? It works, you know, the bat beats everything. You know, the upper body and the bat beats everything instead of allowing your body to work be able to create some more tension and some stretch on the body and then and the bat's really the last thing that kind of turns here as your body turns it clears a path for the bat boom so you use your body much better to create bat speed and the bat is delivered at a much higher rate of speed so you know the bat path stuff is great as far as being consistent and, and all the stuff we talked about but you know, I want to be able to be consistent with the bat moving at a high rate of speed so I'm able to drive the ball even further, right? The harder I can, the faster I can swing, the harder I can hit the ball, the further the ball goes. So um, that's the difference right there. Again, really, really quick. How do we do it? I get asked this all the time. We go through a handful of drills. Um, again, it's not just the drills. Everyone always thinks it's just the drills. You can do the drills improperly. 
So what I do is I spend, you know, depends how long I've got, but I spend a good amount of time explaining all this to the hitter. We talk about what we're trying to do, why we're trying to do it, and then how we're going to do it. And so, you know, with him, one of the big, the first things we did is we tried to get his weight gathered a little bit better. We tried to get into his back leg a little bit more, into his back hip. Um, you know, when he got, what he was doing first is getting to his front foot early, weight would get forward. Typically when you wake, you know, you lose his back leg, your weight gets into your front leg a little bit too early. You end up getting, you know, everything gets pushed forward. And once you're forward, the swing just happens down, happens all the time. And so you need to get into this leg a little bit better so that you can stay, you know, and I call it behind the ball. It's a phrase, you know, what does behind the ball mean? For me, when you think behind the ball, it just means kicking everything back this way a little bit more. Getting around this leg a little bit better. Getting here instead of getting here. When you get here, everything can turn deeper. The turn happens deeper this way, back this way more. So now you get in the zone earlier. The turn happens back here. Your barrel is able to, you're able to turn the barrel and get the barrel working up sooner. When, when you get around here instead, you get forward. Everything gets steeper. The turn doesn't happen. There's really no turn. Everything kind of gets pushed down this way. And then, you know, if you're a guy that can you tr eventually try to get on path, it happens real late. You get this little tiny area to do it. Most guys can't get there. Again, your bat's not in the zone early. You can't hit the ball away very well. Um, so you get that. Instead of the bat turning deeper right here. And again, this is this is about 30 minutes or so of work. 30 to 40 minutes. And so you can see everything is starting to look much better. Obviously, we still got stuff to work on. But pretty impressive for, again, you take someone that's, he's a college player, has hit for a really long time. Um, and we just changed pretty much the way he swings in 30 to 45 minutes, which is fast <laughs> when you've hit like this for 20 years um, not 20 years but you know 10 years 12 years um and so you know i like i told him i was like that's really really good improvement for for one day one hour all together uh we worked a little bit after we took this last video um but there's still things obviously that has to clean up and keep improving and but you could you can see a big difference in the way the ball comes off the bat, the consistency, the ball flight, the bat speed, all that stuff when you start to work your body a little bit differently, a little bit better. So uh, I want to shoot this out to you guys. If you want to do some work, just shoot me a email at matt at, matt at antonellibaseball dot com. That's the best way to get a hold of me. I know a lot of guys shoot me DMs and all that stuff, but it's tough to keep track of all that. So shoot me an email. Um, Check out our Instagram if you have not already. It's only baseball. Twitter feed, man. It's only nine. Uh, share the video with all your friends. Check out the description box below. I got a bunch of stuff down there for you guys to check out as well that I think you guys will like. And that is all I got. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. And have a good one, guys. We'll talk to you later.